Hey everyone, it's Tyler here. Um, today we are doing a summer party cooking class. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, um, my name is Tyler. I have a little social media page called Tyler Plays with Fire. Um, I'm a Big Green Egg brand ambassador. I'm also cooked on a bunch of other barbecues. Uh, today we're cooking on the extra large Big Green Egg as well as a Camp Chef Woodwind. Uh, we're going to be doing three different dishes. Um, we're going to be doing a smoked queso, a uh, cauliflower chicken wing substitute for our vegetarian friends out there, as well as drumstick chicken lollipops. So, first we'll start the extra large Big Green Egg. Today we're going to be cooking at about 375. We have two dishes that call for a 375 degree temperature. We're going to kind of cut the middle there and put them both on the egg at the same time. Um, there's a lot of ways to start your egg. Uh, we have the little wax kit, um, the kit that Big Green Egg has. There's rubber kettles, uh, whatever, chimneys. Uh, a lot of options. I use a blowtorch. Um, because blowtorches are fun. So, we're going to open up the bottom then. Just let all the air come through there. Let this go. And then today, I'm going to throw in some apple chunks in there from them. They're all about 350 to 400 degrees. Um, with the meat, we're going to use that 165 or over. We're going to be good for it. The cheese, the queso, are essentially just making sure everything's mixed together nicely. And the cauliflower wings, we're just trying to get it to a um, nice consistency that you like when you like more authentic or more well done. Alright, this is the camp chef. A little easier to get going since it is a pellet grill. Uh, what we're going to do is first you want to make sure you have enough pellets to get through the cook. Plenty fine there. The camp chef also has a nice little side window on the side of the that lets you uh, visually check from the outside. And we'll just set the dial 375. We are going. Do a little extra auction while we get started. And we're done. So now that we've got a good fire going there, we're actually going to close the lid, open up the top fed all the way. Uh, we're aiming to cook at about 400 degrees, so we're actually going to let this climb to about 450. Uh, when we stick it to the diffuser in the real great, those will suck up quite a bit of um, heat, and it will help drop us down to that 400 degree we want to get it to. So as you can see, it's already climbing up. Oh yeah, 250, so we'll be at 400 pretty quick. Alright, so this has been going for about 5-10 minutes. Um, when you first start our pellet grills, there's a bit of leftover ash, some leftover pellets in the fire pot from our previous cook. By keeping it open like this, it helps just air out a lot of that dirty smoke. As you can see right now, we have no dirty smoke going, so we're going to close this down. That'll help the, um, it come to the temp a little bit quicker, and just let it ride until it hits 375. Alright, so we're at about 410 right now. One thing I like to do on the big green eggs is I will actually orient the thermometer so the desired temp is facing up. So whether I'm at, I want to cook at 225 right here, or I want to cook at 600 over here, that way, if I'm just taking a glance at the grill, if the temperature you want to cook at is at the top, then your dial will be pointing at the top. So if you're across the yard, you can take a quick glance and say, oh, arrow's up. We're good to go. Or hit a little to the left, a little to the right. We know we're a little bit over, a little bit under. So we're at 450 right now. Jump to 475 with the top. So we're going to take this guy. This is the Big Green Egg Expander System. They replace their whole diffuser. Um, you, get a, you cook on a large piece of stone as your diffuser. And it lets you have a little bit more modularity. So we're going to lift this up. That was to move it all in one there. All right, so the first thing we're going to make is our queso cheese dip. Um, the cool thing about the queso is what we're going to be going over today is kind of a baseline recipe, and then you can add and subtract whatever you want. Um, there's really a lot of options here to um, kind of customize it to your personal preference. Um, 
the approach I did was kind of the empty the pantry type approach, because I think we all have those meals where it's just the leftovers in the fridge, the whatever needs to kind of go. Uh, it's a good way to eat up some of those uh, extras. So, what we're going to do today is we're going to be melting two pounds of good old Velveeta cheese, one pound of smoked gouda. We're going to be melting that into our big green egg um, cast iron, about 14 inch. And then we're going to be mixing in um, diced tomatoes and um, peppers and another jalapeno just because I like to go on the spicy side. Um, we're going to do uh, cream of chicken soup to help kind of add the consistency, as well as some um, hot ground sausage in there for that medium, meaty spice. So what we're going to do first is we are going to take this. We're actually going to put it. Okay, we're going to put this on the top of the shelf, top rack. Um, we're going to let this come up to temp, about 4 degrees. And we're going to put the ground sausage in there, let it all run it down in there, drain out the excess fat, and then throw our next uh, toppings in there. Alright, so with peppers in general, all peppers, um, the chemical inside peppers that makes them spicy is called capsaicin. Uh, that is trapped in this seed membrane, a little bit around the seeds, and then in some veiny material on the inside of the meat of the um, pepper. Sometimes people say if you pull out the seeds, it makes peppers not spicy. It's, the seeds don't tell much have anything to do with it. It's all the membrane that's the seeds that are connected to. Um, I've ruled them kind of yellower, that membrane, the uh, spicier that is. So, these guys are super spicy, uh, but they do have a bit of that uh, uh, yellow in there. Um, but fat and cheese and fat and cheese can real and the fat and the sausage really um, tone down a lot of that spice. So we're just gonna throw the whole thing in there. But, Alright, so next we're going to be prepping the chicken drumstick lollipops. So, these are great because drumsticks are pretty cheap. They can fit a decent amount of people for not a lot of money. And, most importantly, by preparing them this way, we can really elevate them above just normal standard drumsticks. So, what we're doing um, is a cooking technique called Frenching them. Um, in the leg, in the drumstick, there's a bunch of kind of rough up and down. When you cook it, that's what can kind of, kind of cause drumsticks to become a little bit on the uh, tough side or stringy side. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this knife and we're going to start cutting around the base of that meat. Um, can't really get, go wrong. Just find the spot that um, where that big chunk of meat kind of stops. Uh, slicing around, you're gonna feel those tendons, and then you're gonna start see, all those tendons right there. And you're gonna start. Peeling stock. You don't have to get perfect. Um, a lot of those are gonna retract when you uh, start cooking them. Um, paper towel helps you get a grip there. But you're essentially just gonna expose that. A little, we can just clean this one up a little bit more. Um, if you have a knife that has a harder um, bevel in the back, 
uh, more of a 90 degree angle, as opposed to a regular one, you can use that to help scrape the bone. So essentially, you're going to get the bone like this, pick it up, we're going to do that for the rest of these, and then we're going to seize them, and then we're going to actually cut them like that, and it's to release all that pressure, and use this morsel of meat at the bottom, it looks a little bit like a lollipop, and it completely changes the texture of the drumsticks. So once again, there's a go around, chart knife helps. So I went, washed my hands, and we're having a clean hand, chicken hand, and what we're going to do is we're just taking a simple rub, get all the sides, you want to season all the parts of the meat that you're going to want to eat, make sure it's nice and even. Now if you want to get really fancy, um, a couple companies make like jalapeno popper stands uh, that you can stick your jalapeno poppers in so they stand straight up on the barbecue, you don't have cheese drip out. Um, if you have one of those or you want to buy one of those, you can actually uh, sneak these bones into them and it'll help them stand up when they're cooking or hang when they're cooking. So you won't end up eating with skinny grill marks and you'll end up with like this perfectly smoked and cooked chicken leg. I don't have those. Um, I don't have a whole lot of uh, very, well, a lot of niche cooking accessories, but what we're gonna do is we're just take these, come over here. So we're gonna take these guys. We're actually put them on the top rack. Um, take our. This is our secret. Our next recipe. We're gonna put this on the top rack. Um, one thing that you will notice about pe uh, pellet grills, we found this out when we did our um, take some trips to find hot spots. Uh, the grease tray kind of slants on pellet grills, so the grease tray is really what radiates a lot of the heat. So on one side, the grease tray is a little bit higher than the other side, and that side will be hotter. So we're going to go on pop rack, help use that heat even more, throw some extra seasoning on it. We'll check back on those in about 20 minutes. So, our sausage is cooked down. Now we're just gonna start dumping our can and mixing that up. So, a full block of Velveeta cheese. Um, you wanna use Velveeta, Velveeta will melt down to a creaminess that um, imitation cheeses just won't. Okay, the chicken, you can use, um, if you could find it, I was not able to find it for this, um, if you can find like, a cream of jalapeno, I know it exists, I just couldn't find it, um, I would do that. <laughs> All right, if you go to Rayleigh's and uh, get the uh, smoked tuna, it might be worth it to tell the uh, people at the deli counter that this is all going in one pot anyway, so they don't have to give you every slice of plastic that they have to have the counter. Uh, it's just going to start melting together. Um, we're going to check in on this periodically, uh, mix it all together, make sure it's all just melted nicely, make sure we don't need any weird clumps of uh, product. So we're going to shut this down and let that start melting. For our fake vegetarian chicken wings, we are going to be doing buffalo style cauliflower. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm prepping stuff like this doesn't have a lot of waste is I just keep a trash bin next to me. Um, this one's made by Cambro. 
Well, actually, crash in, but it's doing the job pretty well right now. Um, that saves you steps to and from the um, trash. Saves you from touching the trash when you're cooking. So, taking my big green egg chef knife. I'm just kind of walking my way around that core. I'm going to take that core out, get all the florets. We really wanted to get that core out because that opens up our options quite a bit. Take out those leaves, and then we're just going to start walking our way around. There we go. And now we're going to take these, slice them into uh, uniform size um, bits, or at least uniform in thickness. Uh, that will help them cook evenly and uh, help us having a super soggy or a super raw uh, florets. So we're going to take the florets, we're going to cover them lightly in olive oil, just enough to give our something on top for our rub to catch on to. Uh, for this we're using the uh, Big Green Egg National Pot. It uh, tastes very, very similar to a uh, powdered uh, buffalo sauce. So Fresh off, and then uh, sprinkle up high. Uh, sprinkle up high is a thing that I caught on to. Um, it doesn't ma matter so much when you mix it together like this. Um, so we um, coating meat. The higher up you get, the less likely you are to get. We like to call it tiger strike when we use those little strips of these things. Perforated cooking tray, dump those on, even though it's not too pumped up. And this is one reason why I love this cook, uh, this top rack, is because you can still support a full uh, cast iron full of food. Put it back, get your cooking space back, and shut it down. So we'll check that back on that in about 20 minutes. So, I screwed up a little bit, but I'm going to let you guys know what I screwed up on so you don't screw it up. Um, so, I have Velveeta 12 table cheese. Um, I had it out here a little bit, quite a little, little long side, uh, so it kind of um, melted a little bit in the container, so I, was, I didn't want to quite throw my cutting board have a giant mess to clean up. Um, so, when you do this at home, uh, take it, put in the, maybe put it in the fridge for a little bit, let it harden up, and then slice it and chunk it up, and that will help you, it melts a little more consistently. Obviously, you can do what I'm doing, which is kind of kneading it all together, um, and that will take care of some of those problems, but uh, you can save yourself some of this work, and just uh, slice up that cheese ahead of time, and not have to knead it together like I am. But, you live and learn. So, uh, what we're doing is we're taking uh, Big Green Egg Kentucky Bourbon barbecue sauce. Uh, we're going to be putting it in this um, Big Green Egg saucepan, and we're going to be dipping the lollipops in this. Be a nice even coat. Um, but before we just get it going, we are actually going to 
um, warm this up on the barbecue. Um, I don't like putting cold sauce on warm meat. Um, I feel like if everything goes better, we'll start with that. Warm sauce. Put that down there. Take our instant read. We're at 174. 185. These are done. Uh, if you want the bone tips to look a little bit more presentable, a little bit more creamy, you can actually uh, wrap those individually in tin foil. Um, it will help the bones that are a little more white, but it, it's a bit extra work for uh, maybe, I don't think necessarily a whole lot of work. So we take these. Nice even coating. Put those back up there to tack up. And we are going to repeat this process two or three times. Because you're going to lose a bit of sauce, so you're going to just repeat the process. Um, chicken is considered a safe eat temp at 165. I tend to taste things like bones and thighs and legs uh, close to like 200 just because there's so much more connected, connected tissue, so much more fat that you can break down and uh, you can preserve a lot of the uh, moisture even though it's going um, higher just because of all that fat that's um, in a muscular bag. is a cup of melted um, grass fed butter. I then mix in some more of our seasoning. We're going to take this. Um, spoon it onto our beautiful cauliflower. Just kind of give us a little bit of a buffalo sauce on there. A little color. We're going to pull these off. So, we got a little bit of char on there, but I actually think that char, a little bit of a flavor, it actually um, helps um, do these. Now, at this point, you can serve these up however you want. If you want to do uh, honey mustard with them, if you want to do blue cheese dressing, or ranch dressing, or anything like that, be my guess. I don't prefer those. But, you can uh, do what you want, that's nasty. So take this, a little drizzle on top, see a little more of that flavor. Let's go grab our chicken wings. I love wings. If you guys have seen the video, you know I love wings. The lollipops.
Very important. Make sure you turn that just off when you're done. Okay, so this. Serving the little serving dish. Obviously, driving the party. You don't want to go bigger serving dish than this. Alright, so got the cauliflower off. It has a little char on there. I think char has a great flavor on it. Uh, not too much char though, of course. So I just take that, wipe it with a little extra. Not too raw, not too um, overdone. Really good flavor on there. Um, definitely brings in the flavor of chicken wings without trying too hard to imitate chicken wings while being vegetarian. Uh, when I cook vegetarian foods, I don't do it super often, but when I cook it, when I uh, eat vegetarian foods, I tend to prefer to eat foods that are uh, not pretending to be meat. Um, I know we made chicken wings here, but we will cook the cauliflower for what it is. We cooked it in a way that really complements the cauliflower, and then um, through seasoning, we can bring in those older um, chicken wing flavors that we wanted while still keeping the cauliflower for what it is and just kind of elevating it above the cauliflower. But that worked out fantastic. Barbecue, just a little off and feel it on the hot sides. But, so I'm trying to get this big chunk of sausage right there. Yeah, that's a two chipper. That is very good. And now, wrap it off. Try to get the even to cool. But I mean, always well, I've never actually tried this Kentucky bourbon barbecue sauce before. French drumsticks, it's a completely different texture than any drumstick you've had before, and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. All right, everyone. That wraps it up today. We got our smoked queso, our chicken lollipops, our cauliflower wings. Um, I hope everyone learned something. I hope everyone enjoyed their um, time here. Um, this will be all posted on Green Acres Instagram as well as on YouTube. And if you want a little bit more of what I do, you can follow me at um, at Tyler Place of Fire. Where that on Instagram, um, and then Play of Fire private cooking events on both YouTube and Facebook. Um, yeah, comment what you're cooking for your all, um, your summer parties. Uh, let's talk about that. And uh, let us know if you have any questions or you'd like to see anything else in the future. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you for tuning in. And we'll see you next time.